Ladies and gentlemen from Los Angeles, Premier Boxing Champions presents Lightweights in the Ring. Introducing our judges scoring from ringside, we have Rudy Barragan, Dr. Lou Moret, and Zachary Young. All right, fans, here we go. Four rounds of action scheduled. Introducing to you first on my left, fighting out of the red corner, from Carson, Cal Carson City, Nevada. He weighed in at 135 pounds tonight in his eighth professional bout. Introducing Diego Elizondo. His opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner from Fontana, California. He weighed in at 134 and one quarter pounds. The former number one ranked national amateur, 1 0, 1 knockout as a young undefeated professional. Introducing Anthony Too Quick Cuba. Referee in charge now to give instructions, Ray Corona. Let's get that mouthpiece in. This is good here, this is good here. You want to touch close, do it now. God bless. Closed captioning is available for tonight's telecast. If you'd like to hear the broadcast in Spanish, you can click over to the simulcast on the Fox Deportes app. Brian Kenny here. We're also joined by Lennox Lewis, Joe Goose in ringside, Heidi Androl and Marcos Villegas with us as well throughout the evening. But Lennox, Joe, good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Hello, Brian. Hello there. <laughs> Joe's ready to go, Lennox as well, and we're underway. Round number one, Anthony Kuba. Again, he is Joe Goosen, 18 years old. What do you expect from this kid? He's 1-0. Well, I expect a lot from him because, you know, as you stated earlier, he, number one in the nation, number, that's a, a big plus for him. And, and of course, that he's being handled by the Santa Cruz family. Now, if they're going to take you on, you got to have something. So let's see what shakes out here, but he's probably pretty good. Elizondo here we're trying to corner him to the ropes. Able to make a stand, and he comes in. He's 3-2-2. Two, and two. Actually started his pro career with two wins, then two draws, and then two losses. So he now moves up. This is a big step up for him. You know you're facing the prospect. Lennox, you were always on the other side. You were always the name. But you got to wonder what these guys go through when they take the fight against a 1-0, like, former amateur star. Yeah, I mean, they, can all, they always think that they're the best and that they can beat the person. And uh, with uh, Eliando, he's... Uh, you know, he's an amateur, and he's he's focused, he believes in himself, so he wants to go out there and really prove that, you know, he's, he's, he belongs up at the top. And Joe is southpaw, Elizondo as well, so he, he does provide a, a different look for Cuba, and I know you're always very wary of left-handers. Well, yeah, because, look, it's a four-round fight, Brian, and, and, you know, sometimes it takes you a little bit to figure out a southpaw and just get the, you know, the right feel for it. So, now, that being said, uh, it looks like Elizondo's in pretty good shape. He looks very thin and... and uh, he's pressing the fight right now. He's going and remember he's been in the ring six times in the pro ring six times just once for uh, uh, Cuba, so you know, he, he he has had the experience being up here under the light So, you know, he's gonna probably try to get something done Like I said, he's pressing the fight which is good and he looks sharp right now. So let's see what yeah, how this unfolds Elizondo came out uh, firing early on and there he is throwing the combination coming up short Cuba now switching to southpaw goes back to orthodox, but he's mixed it up a little bit already two minutes of round one yeah, in Cuba, in the fighter meetings, Brian, he, he, I know you had to leave early, but um, uh, Cuba said that, you know, he likes to box. And I said, do you like to press at all? He goes, well, actually, I don't like to press until after I hurt a guy. So he's going to probably wait until he lands something solid before you see him turn on the uh, the afterburners. But right now, he's being patient. He's looking for a counter punching. Yeah, he's being, he's being a good patient. You know, he's, he's making sure he's not getting hit in the first round. And his defense is, is up, his hands are up. He's watching the, he's watching Elizondo and seeing what he can figure out. Uh, but Elizondo's looking good. He's looking focused. Yeah. He wants to, he wants to uh, get that right jab in there. He's, he's trying. And uh, this is just a first-round feel-out round. It is, but but right now, you know, when you score a fight in the pros, it's, you know, uh, uh, the guy that's putting on the pressure will normally get the, the, the round. So we, we got to decide who do you think won that round at the end of this. And to your point, Joe, four rounds, boy, it, uh, it happens very quickly. That is round number one. Here on Fox and ready to go, we are still uh, distant but close. Brian Kenny here with Lennox Lewis and Joe Goosen. Looking forward to Anthony Durrell and Kyron Davis. Joe, you're first. Give me something on Durrell. What do you expect? He's 36. He is coming off a loss, but he's still one of the top fighters at 168. Yeah, you better believe he is. He's only lost two fights in his career. I mean, you know, the guy's really beaten everyone else put in front of him. 
Uh, so he's 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 determined. He's a winner, and I, I really like Darrell's presence in the ring. He's an excellent boxer, and really has great instincts in the ring. So I think he's really a good fighter. Yeah, Lennox, you can tell us what it's like fighting on into your 30s. And look, heavyweights sometimes fight a little older, but not not as much, you know, at that weight class. Obviously, Bernard Hopkins, but 168 at the age of 36. Your thoughts on Darrell? Darrell is, um, you know, is a is a great fighter. He's uh, been boxing from his nine years old, and you know, is boxing out of Flint, Michigan, and he's boxing with a great trainer, um, uh, Sugar Hill, and that's the trainer of Tyson Fury, heavyweight champion of the world. So he's got some good people in his corner. Now we're gonna have to see if he's like fine wine or is the age actually getting to him. We'll see tonight, and after a long layoff here in this fight, now Elizondo, Diego Elizondo in the black trunks. Uh, he is the uh, sort of challenger here. He's on the other side. The prospect is Anthony Cuba, but uh, Elizondo has made a good account of himself. Cuba still trying to figure things out, but Elizondo definitely aggressive and able to slip under that right hand. Well, yeah, and, and I think Cuba was said, hey, look, this is a four-round fight uh, in his corner, told him you better get out there and start, you know, doing something because you may have lost that first round just on the fact that Elizondo was putting on the pressure. So he's trying to make up maybe a little bit of lost ground in that first round. Remember, like you said, these four-round fights go by very quickly. Yeah, you'll see on a guy's record sometimes. There's a nice right hand and a hook from Kuba. You'll see on a guy's record how, hey, how did the guy get a draw when he went on to become a world champion? Well, here's why. You got a four-round fight, and you have a scrappy guy coming in to beat you. That's it. That's it. And, and Elizondo is obviously here to win the fight. You know, there's some guys that come in, they, they come in knowing they're they don't have the confidence. They they may not have trained as hard, but Elizondo looks like he came here to win it. Oh yeah, but you know the good thing about Cuba, he's on his toes. It's very important to be on your toes. You still got that little amateur in him, but that's good because you got to be on your toes, especially against a guy that's coming and trying to blast you out, like Stop. Elizondo. Take a step back. Yeah, Elizondo is is very active, and he just got tagged a, a second ago, and he came firing back with a combination. So, Joe, to your point, yeah, he, he's in good shape. He's able to, you know, utilize that energy and and keep Cuba at, at bay. Yeah, I mean, there's a minute left in the second round. We're halfway through the fight basically when this yeah. when the bell rings here. But the only thing about blasting, I don't know if he's going to blast out Kuba because he doesn't have one knockout on his record in the six fights. You know, mm. obviously he's only won, he's only won three of them, but no knockouts at all. So he, he's probably not heavy handed at all. He's going to have to beat you on pressure and outworking you. That's yeah, his. He has done a, yep, he's done a good job of that so far. Uh, again, first round is, uh, is up in the air. Second round appears to be close as well. And 1-0, and oh, Anthony Kuba getting in here to get work and make his level of progression and uh, picked a tough guy to do it against. Yeah, Alexandro has him almost against the ropes. He just needs to take that next step and put Cuba against the ropes, and that's when he needs to do the work, throw those combinations so he doesn't have that chance to, to jump back. Underway here in Los Angeles. That is round number two as they clash at the bell. All right, we had a little give and take in that second round here, Lennox, and here's that left hand boom right there from Elizondo and he landed right on the button. Oh, here you go where Alexando is has him against the ropes. This is where he, I say he has to get get throwing some punches. Got to yeah. throw some combinations in there. He's, he doesn't have that that much time. So this is where he needs to throw the combinations when he gets Cuba against the ropes. It's safe to say they both landed a good shot in that round. Oh, yeah. Right hand by Cuba and the left hand by Elizondo. But again, close round. I mean, you got two close rounds here. And, and I got to tell you, if I'm in the corner of uh, Cuba, I'm saying, hey, look, you got to start moving in on this guy because you're really not landing enough punches to make it decisive for the judges to say you won this round easily. Um, so yeah, I agree with you, Joe, because yeah. right, you're only two rounds in, and look, he's active again. He's active, he's throwing, he's moving his head. Uh, you see him moving his head there against Cuba, able to get underneath it, so Cuba unable to really get any momentum and also hurt Elizondo. That has not happened so far. It has not. Well, in both you see the punches corners, landed and thrown. I just want to point out, 24 to 17, if you want to go by CompuBox, so a slight uh, increase there, slight discrepancy in favor of Cuba. Yeah, this is a, this is a close fight, and... You know, this is where you need to take it if you're if you're either boxer. Somebody has to show that they want this fight so bad. And how they show that? By throwing punches and rallying. Yeah, this is really one more fight than an amateur fight. And, you know, in the amateur fights, they let it go for three rounds. Yeah. Know? This is very little time. But, uh, all right, here we are in the third round right now. And, and, 
and and Cuba started to come out and put some pressure on and wanted to impress the judges which I think he should be doing right now and Elizondo on his part he should be doing what he did the first two rounds and throw he landed a good left hand right there and yeah, left hand there Cuba staggered a little bit Elizondo able to fire and there's a right hand Cuba firing back and a good hook to the body yeah, Cuba realizes that, yo, he can't allow this guy to get a shot off and lead the way. He has to come back and, and answer the questions and throw more punches. Yeah, right. Elizondo there with a nice jab was able to kind of polax Cuba. Good behind, call. Got him behind that. Yeah, he walked right into it, didn't he? So he, he, you know, he met that pressure of that jab and it really snapped his head back. And I got to tell you, you pointed out that body shot for Cuba. He also landed a good left hook to the head, too. So he's scoring as well, but it's a lot of give and take right here. And I got to give Elizondo a lot of credit for a guy with a 3 2 and 2 record, or 3 3 and uh, 3 2 and 2 record. 3 2 and 2, yeah. No, not. Right. He's really making a, 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 a nice showing for himself. Uh, well, Tonight. His defense is really good. You can tell that he's been sparring with some good guys because he's throwing some uh, his hands up and he's blocking his face, which is very important. And he's coming back with some good combinations to the body and then to the head. So those are those are good scoring punches. Elizondo firing back after he ate a right hand. Good action pack. Round number three, right to the bell. Let's go. Diego Elizondo there. He is only 22 years old. We've talked a lot about Anthony Cuba, who's 18. He's in the uh, gold and red trunks. Elizondo, uh, the so-called opponent in the black and the blue. We've been talking about how s uh, difficult it is to score these rounds. Marcos Viegas is here to do just that. Marcos, how do you have it? Brian, this is a very, very close fight. I can see the judges having it either or. For me, in my opinion, I have Elizondo winning all three rounds with a swing round in the second. Uh, to me, I think he's woo, landing the bigger punches, as you can see right there. Uh, Cuba, you know, when he does land, a lot of them are being blocked or they're like, their tap type punches. The, you, the judges like to see damaging, effective punches. And for me, Elizondo's been doing that in this fight. Yeah, and the yellow, to... Marcos, thank you very much. The yellow, by the way, as you see there, that means it, it's very close. We try to shade that to say a judge could have it either way. But Marcos, good job. I like Marcos in the middle of that. Uh, Lennox going, oof, right there, seeing the shot land. But it is possible that you could give Elizondo all three rounds. You're thinking he won the second, Lennox? Yeah, I think he won two rounds. I think this is a close fight. And, you know, uh, Cuba has to rally if he wants this fight to, to go to the judges. Because right now, if he doesn't, he's, he's going to lose this fight because he's still got that amateur style right now the polls are uh, the, the judges are looking at the pole style pole style is being aggressive and throwing coming forward and throwing punches he is letting it fly right now kuba uh, aggressive so far joe is that how you would see the scoring like 2-1 either yeah, way or I, it could I, be 3-0 I, I agree 100 percent with marcos I, I i think he he did Stop. a great job describing what was the, going on in the ring here and I, and, and and i gotta tell you right now obviously the corner had a talking to with kuba because he came out both barrels blasting right here to win this round they may think themselves that he's only won one round maybe no rounds but maybe one round that he can get a draw out of this yeah. you know well, alexander showed good defense like like um like you said he, he's not getting hit and he looks aggressive and he looks like he wants to get in there and throw some heavy punches so you know this is looking good for him by the judges for the judges i see a little i see a little blood there on the left eye of cuba as well i think it was a, a little uppercut from elizondo i say little because it was short but it, it definitely had an effect so it appears he's drawn a little blood here in round four Quick yeah, jab there by Elizondo on the move in in the final 45 seconds. Go ahead, Joe. No, I was going to say, uh, uh, you know, we could tell when Elizondo stepped into the ring. He looked in great shape, and his trainer, uh, Christian Avilos, did a great job with him, I think. They said they were going to come to win this fight. Yeah, they and were serious. Yeah, they were. And I think we've got a great little fight on our hands, and it's going to be an interesting decision when it comes down to it in the next 30 seconds. Yeah, I think Cuba really, needs to really step up right now. Right now, he's dancing around. He doesn't yep. have time to dance around. He needs to go in there and throw some combinations at Elizondo and and then try and win this fight. Kuba trying to kind of pot shot there with the right hand on the move. And final seconds here. He did a lot of good work early on. Elizondo there with a left hand, putting him back. And now we have to describe this as oh. two young prospects firing in a big left hand there from Elizondo. Both colliding and swinging to the bell. That's an 18-year-old kid and a 22-year-old kid, neither with any intention of losing. And it'll go to the judges' cards. That, Lennox, that's a good scrap. How about that? Yeah, it's a good scrap. <laughs> Both of them went at it. You know, uh, you know, they're, they're young guys. They're throwing, um, they've only had four fights. So uh, they've still got a lot of work to do, a lot of experience to gain. And uh, this is just a, a, a learning experience for them. But here, Anthony Cuba, Diego Elizondo, 
And this already a test for the judges, a difficult fight to score. Let's go to Jimmy Lennon Jr. in the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, after four rounds of action, we go to the scorecards. Here are the score totals. Dr. Lou Moret scores about 39 to 37 in favor of Anthony Cuba. Judges Zachary Young and Rudy Barragan both scored about 38 to 38, even a draw. The decision is a majority draw. Well, uh, it seems disappointing, but uh, look, it could happen, and we're trying to score it as we're going along. And you could make a case, I'll tell you unofficially, Marcos Villegas had it for zip, mm -hmm. by the way. And I don't think that's outrageous, Joe Goosen. I think it could happen. Take a look at the copy box numbers. Elizondo at the end, outlanding Anthony Cuba. Uh, Joe and Lennox, give me your thoughts on the scoring. Well, you know, when, we're not uh, scorers, but uh, I would say Alexander really came and showed some good stuff and some, you know, he showed that he's been in with some pros and he's been sparring with some pros because he's got that pro style and um, he throws some good shots. You know what I would say, Joe, to, to throw it to you, I would yeah. say he, to have it 2-2 is to give Cuba every benefit of the doubt. I don't think it's wrong, but you have to give him every benefit of the doubt. All right, without it, uh, expounding on that too much, you're exactly right. <laughs> you know, Look yeah. at that. Yeah. If yeah. only everything worked that way. <laughs> hey, we're underway. And that was a good fight. A good job by Diego Elizondo there against Anthony Cuba.